52 points last night in a win over the Clippers. The win extends Philly's win streak to three. And they now are 25-2 and two at home, best record in the NBA. This comes after a rough stretch of criticism from the likes of Barkley and Shaq, some off-season trade rumors, and Joel Embiid embracing a villain role on social media. Kawhi Leonard did actually play for L.A. last night, did score 30. But Rick Buecher, we're going to start with the Sixers. Fox Sports NBA analyst Rick Buecher's here. Rick, did this Sixers win prove maybe that we were a little premature? I shouldn't say we. Rob was premature oh, in breaking up Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. No, not at all. I mean, look, we can't just take one game and decide that everything has been fixed, especially a game at home. There's nothing wrong with the talent of Joel Embiid. There's nothing wrong with the talent of Ben Simmons. What's wrong is the two of them together. I can go analytics with you. Thank you. And tell you that that combo from an offensive, offensive efficiency standpoint or a defensive efficiency standpoint, it's not their best combo. Not by a stretch. They got four or five other ones that are more efficient. The other part is this, this great divide between what they do at home and what they do on the road and the consistency of their play. If they played any semblance of the way they played last mm -hmm. night, on a regular basis, I'd say, give it a ride. Even though from a basketball standpoint, I don't think it fits, let's see. But they don't give you that consistency because there's a void when it comes to leadership. I'll tell you, I'll ask you right now, I ask all of you, who's the leader of this team? Is it well, Joel? He's, he's, playing in is it he's playing in Miami. Okay, well, but the bottom line is nobody has grabbed, nobody has grabbed the reins. And so almost to their benefit, Take one of them out of the equation, and the other one is going to have to. Or we're going to find out whether he's, he's capable of it. If we just, if we redefined who Ben Simmons was, if we stopped calling him a point guard and looked at him through the prism of Kawhi Leonard or Giannis Antetokounmpo as a forward or a point forward, a forward with playmaking capabilities, we'd, this wouldn't be such a mystery. We wouldn't be looking at it because... You look at Giannis and what he has in the center, center position, it's Brooke Lopez. He can space the floor. You look at what uh, Kawhi Leonard has. It's uh, Ivica Zubac, who you're not going to play through offensively, right? He's there for defensive pur purposes primarily. That's what you have to do to get the best out of Ben Simmons. And Joel Embiid is not. And if you're going to do that, then you're not going to get the best out of Joel Embiid. Yeah, I agree with most of what you say. I, I, I don't think Embiid's where Brooke Lopez is as a floor spacer. Now, because Brooke has become a really good three-point shooter. If he were that, then they would fit. Because I, I think Ben can play like Giannis. But I'm with you for the most part in that they, they like Simmons or uh, Embiid said it last week, the floor spacing is jacked up. Because mm -hmm. to get somebody to guard Simmons, you have to put him down low in the fourth quarter especially. And then that forces Embiid out and takes him away from what he does best. Right. While he's a decent shooter, he can't be at the post. But I think this is perfect because to, to break them up already, let's say they broke them up last year. I think that would have been premature. Now, even to break them up at the deadline this year, I think would have been premature. You got the rest of the season, see what they do in the playoffs. If they, Because they still, I would argue, have the most talent in the East. And if they can put it together, the fact that they play so well at home does tell you it's something there. And you're right, Rick. They don't have leadership. Talent on paper. Right. And, yeah, and, but, but hold on. They're 25-2 and two at home, and I know it's at home. But they've beat the top four teams in every conference or in each conference at home. And you're right. It's the lack of leadership and real camaraderie and chemistry in that locker room that makes them so bad on the road. However, the talent is there. Last night they started Furkan Korkmaz at yeah. the, at the three the instead Zunzai. of instead of Al Horford. Now he didn't play well. He was coming off two 30 plus point games. Didn't even score last night. But they started Glenn Robinson at the instead of him in the second half. And Josh Richardson. Came. Right. And Josh Richardson. So space the floor more with the shooter instead of Al Horford, and they found some success. I, I'm with you in that look. If they have a disappointing postseason, I'm doing one of two things. I'm moving MB because you can get a haul for him, I think. And, and I think Ben Simmons can be like a point center even, you know, if, or a point forward, whatever you want to call him. Or I don't know who this coach is. Phil Jackson could have been the guy, but he's obviously not coming back to coaching. If you can find a coach who can maximize those two together, 
and work their personalities together, has a scheme that might work, that would be the guy. Who's the guy, but, invented, who's uh, the guy invented the Rubik's Cube? I was going to say, I, I, I don't know. Right. right. I don't that know guy. who that I, is. I'm with Rick, but make though, the trade then. I, I'm with Rick that, that at this point, <clears throat> excuse me, I would be willing after this postseason to part these two and go find somebody to sign. What if it's a good part? What if they go out in six or seven in the conference finals? I'm just asking. But, yeah, well, I mean, you'd, you'd have, to, you'd have to rethink that because of how they lost or what whatever. You mean, what I'm saying. But the other thing is, is they're locked up financially. Mm -hmm. Like, they've already invested in all the pieces. Are they going to get better? Al Horford's not going to get better. And are you going to count on, like, Josh Richardson knock down threes. That's the big issue, is that you have to have all these things around you to be perfect for them to be ideal. And I just I think it's asking too much. I, look, it's a fair question. If, if, if you got to the conference finals, would you hold on to it? Would you? And if they get knocked out in the first round, I think you would take a look and go, oh, you, you know got, what? I mean, we, we got to break it up, in right? In Portland with Damian Lillard and uh, C.J. McCollum to an extent. They decided, oh, we're not going to break it up. They get to the conference finals last year. Right. This year, they're on the outside looking into the playoffs. So maybe you give it one more chance, but that might not even work. But here's the difference. The, we went through the whole process. We had the losing of four or five years. The promise for all of that was, oh, but we're going to build a champion. Yep. Not a team that gets to the second round. You had that before the process started. Mm -hmm. A championship. If you look at the, the, the league and you look at this team, do you say, oh, yeah, that I see this team winning a championship at some point. If you don't, then I say you reshuffle the deck. Which one would you give up, Trey? I would give up Ben Simmons wow. because I believe that Joel Embiid... Now, I talked to a number of GMs about this. If you're trying to win right now, you trade Ben Simmons. If you are playing the long game because of Joel Embiid's health and questions about his durability, you would go with Ben Simmons, and you're going to assume that he's going to develop... A, uh, a jump shot at some point in his life before he retires. <laughs> uh, but I, look, I just, I feel like Embiid is, it, the problem with using him as Brook Lopez and just as a spacer is he can do so much more. Yes. He, you can play right. through him. He is a, he is a, a, a passer. He can play below the, below the free throw line. I don't, I want to fully maximize who he is. Ben, because I've seen, look, I've seen Markel Fultz improve his jump shot. Lonzo Ball is a jump shooter. Giannis Antetokounmpo has a three-point shot. This, to me, is the great mystery in the NBA, no is that Ben Simmons, after all these years, years right. still does not have any semblance of a jump shot, never mind three-point range, a pull-up jump shot mm -hmm. from 17, 18 feet. Yeah, it's what, what we saw last night with the 76ers is what frustrates every, every Sixers fan. This is who they have the potential to be, but this mm. is not what they are every single night, night in and night out. In part, and in part, is because of the effort that these guys play with. You said something that that stuck out to me about leadership and not identifying who and what that leadership looks like on that team. I think they thought Al Horford was going to be that guy that steps in and be, able, and, and be the leader and corral these guys and help guide them on how to win yeah. and how to be professionals. That hasn't happened. Right. And because that hasn't happened, you still see this up and down roller coaster of a team because they struggle with identity. Are we going to be a big team and play through Embiid, or are we going to be a run-and-gun team and let Ben Simmons just fast break it and get to the hole and then space the floor out? They don't know that. And so you, I think the answer is no, it's not premature. When it talks about are we going to blow this team up or should they? Yes, because it's not working on a night in and night out basis. They show flashes and every team shows flashes at some point. But this team, the expectations to your point is Championship, yeah. and, and, and they, that's not going to happen. They they have currently right matched the Knicks road record. Like as bad as the Knicks teams is, they have the same road record. That tells you that there's something not right in there. Right. Your, you can't your, best, be that. your best players have to be your hardest workers. The the scary thing for Philadelphia, and I get it. Now I'm with you guys. If it goes south this postseason, you break it up. But the scary thing is you're looking at it like. Man, we got two great young yes. players. That's young right. One's players. a playmaker, yes. 
One's a big man. Right. You Historically, that should go together. That would have been great in the NBA, but with this new NBA with the three-point shooting, yeah, it doesn't. You can't, you can't be a point guard if you can't shoot the three. You just cannot be an elite point guard if you can't right. shoot the three, which is why I'm saying the first thing that we have to do is we have to redefine who Ben Simmons is. Then we can start to get to the heart Rick, of what this is. He has to shot. almost be a center. What's that? I, mean, I know, but he's got, he's got a, a one way or another. Whatever label you put on it, he has to play below the free throw right. line. And if he plays below the free throw line, that means Joel Embiid cannot right. play below the free throw line. It should be noted Ben Simmons. It's as simple as right. that. He can push double. it in transition, yes. but when they're in the half yes. court, well, last you got to put him court, in the court. Torch Morris, Kawhi, Paul Jordan. He can Let's drive. Talk a little bit about oh, the dude, he can One penetrate. dribble away from the basket? Right. He's, he's amazing. Yes. Did you see that, that dipsy doodle shot he made? The reverse, right? About the Clippers. We got a couple Clippers fanboys here who think they're better than the Lakers. Oh, goodness gracious. The Lakers had lost last night to the Sixers. You say that like it's... I'm just joking around. Right, like it's What's ridiculous. the name of this show? Undisputed? Right, right. That is undisputed. <laughs> yes. That, so that you, is undisputed. You. If the Lakers had lost like this last night, oh, we would have, oh, geez, LeBron couldn't come through in the fourth. Anthony Davis was... Don't try to lead. Don't just try to lead the question. Right, right. Listen, it's one of those situations where Paul George was awful, three for 15. He's uh, having the worst shooting year from the field in the last five years. Yeah, I'm loading up on anti uh, Not getting to the free throw line, uh, one of the worst levels of his career. Yeah. Um, your thoughts on the Clippers uh, heading into the All-Star break now?